A legendary Las Vegas comedian who's had more comebacks than Cher joins forces with a millennial writer whose most notable achievement is turning existential dread into a fine art. That's the story behind the hit Max series Hacks, and joining us in the studio are the stars of the show, Gene Smart, Hannah Einbinder, and Paul W. Downs, who also created the show along with Jen Stotsky and Lucia Agnello. How are we doing, everybody? Never better, better man. Yeah. yeah, this is great. So, um, being introduced to like Hacks and like watched a few episodes, love it. I'm like, what have Thank I been you. missing out on? It's incredible. Thank and you. you know, once you fall in love with something, you start to do little deep dives into it, like see the fan bases, the Reddits, all this. Mm -hmm. And I saw a little comment that said, like, this is the perfect replacement for Curb Your Enthusiasm, which, oh. you know, I was like, that just ended. Yeah, it's just like, what I felt, was... so I wanted to comment that. <laughs> <laughs> But before we get into it, like, how do you guys feel about that? Like, is it just kind of like that's a huge honor? Or are you saying like, nah, we're better, so that way we can throw uh, some shade over I think it? It's a good, <laughs> very good compliment. You know, yeah, that's sure. the uh, highest compliment. That was yeah. a fabulous oh, right? show. Huge Larry yeah. David fan. LD. Oh my yeah. god. Also, too, because the, the, the show was so real, you yes. know, and, and mm -hmm. then we strive to have that same kind of. You know. Yeah, no, I totally get that. Well, I'm glad you guys have the gratitude for it because I have the gratitude that it even exists and that many other people do. So I'm like, when I read that, I was like, incredible. Great. So, Paul, like, how did the original idea for Hacks even come about? Like, especially when there's this commentary on the, like, aging comedian or even just aging actresses. Like, there's always, like, a little bit of pushback when it comes to that. Like, so where did that idea come from? You know, Jen, Lucia, and I were on a road trip to Portland, Maine. Um, and we were in the car and we were talking about our favorite comedians who aren't people that necessarily had um, the success that a lot of their male counterparts did. They didn't mm -hmm. have, they, they weren't Jerry Seinfeld, even though they were stand-ups at the same time. Right, right. Um, and we were like, what happened to all of those female stand-ups? Like, why weren't they Jerry Seinfeld or um, um, Jay Leno? Or why didn't they have the huge platforms that a lot of their contemporaries yeah. had? Um, and so, you know, I think there's that thing, and it's happened a lot more in culture, honestly, since the show started, where people are like, you know, we got that person wrong, where has that person been? Let's put that person in something. And I think that we've always sort of had, um, we, that, that's just always appealed to us, and we wanted to explore a show um, that dealt with a, a stand-up who wasn't necessarily understood by a younger writer, mm -hmm. um, but whose very existence and achievements helped pave the way for that woman in comedy and for everyone in comedy and so uh, it was 2015 that we started yeah. talking about it and then it took a while for us to even pitch and then start to make the show so we've been thinking about it for a long time it's really cool yeah. yeah I love how you described it because it almost seems like a celebration of those comedians that like should be getting the love that they always have like a Jerry Seinfeld and those yeah. type of people uh, Jen I want to talk to you about like providing your like unique voice and perspective to this conversation surrounding the generational divide between like comedians in this sense like how did you kind of like see that and how did you go about kind of like putting that into the show yeah I mean like Paul was saying we wanted to pay homage to these women and, and kind of explore the idea of why they hadn't quite gotten their due but to do a character study like that we thought it would be most interesting to do it through the lens of a younger writer who maybe mm -hmm. didn't fully appreciate her and see that evolution as she comes to appreciate everything she done and how that everything she done forged that path for her and you know i think for us that we wanted to explore that generational divide and where they align and where they don't align and and because you know comedy is so much about connection and mm -hmm. it's about coming to a place of understanding each other and it's a lot easier to come to a place of understanding each other when you're laughing first yeah, it like yeah. relaxes everybody and then you can kind of hear someone else's perspective maybe a little bit better and so for us like their generational divide was just something that was so like key to the show because we said like that's a uh, that's a lens through which we can like talk about a lot of things mm -hmm. but first and foremost make people laugh and make yeah. people have a good time watching the show so yeah it's 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 always been from the conception of the show a very important piece of it and, and very important and like you know I'm laughing every time I'm watching mm -hmm. it so you accomplished something there that's <laughs> very go. great it's hard for me to laugh it's, it's really not hard for me I love laughing now Uchiha I don't want to put you on the spot uh -oh. <laughs> There's a reason why we sat you in that specific spot right really? there. Yeah, because okay, I want to ask you a very important question. Okay. Was Gene your first choice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, here's the thing about Gene. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth. Is if you think about the kind of character that we wrote in the tone of the show, which is it's got hard jokes, and mm -hmm. she's playing a stand-up comedian, and. But there's also, you know, more dramatic moments. And if you really think about somebody who can 
do both of those things with ease, mm. there is nobody other than Jean to do that. I mean, she can, and the reason I think that she can do that is she's so deeply in the moment as an actor. Mm -hmm. And that is why when she's on stage playing a stand-up comedian, it feels real. It is almost impossible. I know stand-up comedians who do not seem like stand-up comedians on camera. Right, right. You know, but Jean is so mm -hmm. dropped in as just a performer. She's listening. She's constantly present. And uh, to me, that's the reason she plays a stand-up so convincingly. And then when you pair that with somebody who can same reason, be so in the moment as a dramatic actor that she can handle those scenes too. It's like, I dare you. I'm like, show me, show me someone else. There is no one else. So, right. I'm sorry. No, 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 no offense to these women, but, um, but you know, it's like that's not that's not something that is done easily. And, and she is her. Um, she it's an instrument, and she. Mm -hmm has complete mastery over that instrument. Okay. Wow. See, we just did I that. I should retire right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We got some more seasons. Gene has okay. left the building now. Uh, we just did that so we can give you some hype. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you deserve it. <laughs> okay. You deserve it, right? And now that, now that you know this and you hear this, talk to us about Deborah. Talk to us about your character. Like, when you initially read for her, what is it that drew you in? I, I just said this, this part has everything I could want in a, in a role. I mean, I... I've said this before, I said if, if I had sat down with a piece of paper to write down everything I wanted in my next job, mm -hmm. it had, it every ticked every box. And that. it just was, it was funny, it moved me, it was, it was smart, it was, forgive the pun, um, <laughs> it, it just had everything. Yeah. And plus, you know, I'd always fantasized when I was growing up, and I told them this in our first meeting, I said, you have no way of knowing this, but... Phyllis Diller was my idol when I was in middle school. Mm. And uh, I always thought that it looked like enormous amount of fun, but I never had the guts to try it, you know. You're so this way I get to do it and people get paid to laugh at my, <laughs> at my jokes. So I have all the fun and none of the risk. That actually works a lot for uh, you. Oh, it's the best. That's amazing. Well, now we're gonna ha hand it over to Hannah because you know, you're like the other side of the coin, part of the big duo and everything. And I hear that you've been doing stand-up for a while and you haven't acted before. Like, talk a little bit about making that jump, the differences. Was there difficulties? Was it like fitting like a glove? How did that go? I think um, stand-up comedy is all about building up like a facade mm -hmm. of a persona. Even if, even the most like natural comedians who sound like they're just telling a story or talking are shaping a character that they are portraying, it is a performance of self. Mm -hmm. And to uh, let those sort of, let that construct fall away and step into something else is probably like where the transition happens, mm -hmm. which was what I, um, had to do, uh, just in terms of like uh, understanding performance in a new way. Mm. Um, but you know, like the role of Ava was really locked into my sensibility. Like there felt like a real alignment between like their comedic style and mine, and um, especially the way they wrote this character. So mm. I think that's probably why I was able to step in and do it. It feels so natural to you, Thank you know? You. It, it always amazes me when you hear someone's acting for the first time and they're just killing it. You're just kind of <laughs> like. She really is a natural. She and is. Yeah. It's like it, well, yeah. the same thing, like what she was so nicely saying, mm. is that she is in the moment. I mean, that is a term that we talk about with an actor where there's, it's like, Every moment, she's right there as if mm -hmm. she's living it at that moment. She didn't, didn't rehearse it before a time. Mm -hmm. She didn't all that. It's just she's just living that moment, and I see it in her eyes. I mean, it's, it was just there from day one. Absolutely, that. completely, one hundred percent there from day one. And that chemistry just completely shows, like on screen. It's it's absolutely incredible. So this is for Paul, Jen, and Lucia. You tackle so many like issues, and there's a lot of commentary, like ageism, sexism, like generate every all of these things. How do you choose like what exactly to tackle like on an episode by episode basis? Mm -hmm. Do you have like a drawing board? Is there like that weird crazy Charlie Day thing that's like <laughs> this is what we're doing in episode, like season three? Like how does that go about? What's the process? We start with the word ism and then we put <laughs> something in front. Back um, it up, back it up, figure uh, it out. Which one is it? You know, so <laughs> ism yeah. is in is in permanent mark, and then we have dry erase. Yeah. Right? No, we um. <laughs> You know, it comes, it comes, we, we approach it honestly funny first, and we mm -hmm. think, what is a funny situation? Mm. 
Um, but also we do think about what is a really rich thing to explore through the lens of women who are so different mm -hmm. um, because of their life experience. And so um, whether that's um, the way in which they uh, view political correctness or the way in which mm -hmm. they view sexual assault. It's mm -hmm. different because they have different lived experiences. Mm -hmm. And we try never to say one person is right or one person is wrong. We try and empathize with both people mm -hmm. and have them educate each other and make each other better. And I think ultimately, um, you know, it it's kind of, it's it's something that we try and do, but we're never trying to make a very special episode or, mm -hmm. or deal with something right, necessarily. Right, right. You know, it's, it's secondary to um, really the, the love story that is these two characters and where they go. Mm -hmm. But what's nice is we have two people who care so much about each other and about their work and they feel like they have purpose in life, right. which means the stakes are high and it means we get to watch them change and we get to watch them accomplish things. And ultimately mm -hmm. the show I think is, a, is, about, is about people's fight for dignity and, and, yeah. and trying to have dignity. And so that is sort of the North Star. It's like, okay, what are they gonna do here? What indignity will they suffer mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. that they have to overcome? Yeah, so that's okay. Uh, so as, now I'm gonna take that, sure. bring it over to Hannah and Jean, the, the two leads, is as vehicles for these ideas, like obviously we talked about how great your chemistry is. I wanna know, what did you, what exactly did you do to kind of like work on that chemistry like off screen like do you have like do you go out for dinners was there like talks is there exercises like I'm very we didn't curious do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like to spend a lot of time with her <laughs> yeah, yeah we have actually a, a restraining order outside the store <laughs> in place once we're on the the yeah. universal lot it is null and void yeah, yeah, yeah. we pass those security universal gates lot in any in any studio they stagger so. our exit times are, yeah. are you just here for me and my baby in this like separation <laughs> like, are you just on this house to make your mother and i love you very much yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But but never in the same scene together it's actually just body doubles on the yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, First time it's a that. tennis ball they Oh gosh! Okay. No, we don't. We didn't. Cool. Yeah. You know, I, I was saying, I was saying earlier that it, it's every once in a while I'll watch a scene, kind of like the the, the tag on the trailer, mm -hmm. the yes. bay thing, mm -hmm. is that I watch that and it's <laughs> and and certainly I am not as un PC mm -hmm. as as. Uh, as Deborah is, thank God. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Although I do, I do enjoy those moments because it drives Ava so crazy. <laughs> but um, it's funny because it, we, you know, we. To, I think for the most part, we're very much in sync about our worldview and our, the, how we feel about work and people and people we love and everything. We're very much alike, but we are from very different generations, and we do see certain things differently. And so every once in a while, I watch a scene, it just tickles me because. It's sort of like one of our conversations. I don't know if you agree, but it's just been like multiplied and blown up, you know, mm -hmm. um, ten times, you know, for the, for the humor. It just makes me laugh. That's you know? great. But um, you know what? They they text. I mean, they are. You know, they actually have outside of the show a relationship, which we are so mm -hmm. lucky to have with each other, all right. of us. You know, that is like a really special part that I think you can sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's they didn't more than me just a baby shower. Really? Yes. Yes. We did. Really? See, I feel like I'm uh, learning so like the un <laughs> your universe, right? Because you just told me that you just had a baby, and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and now I'm learning. They threw you a baby shower. Now I want to know everything about your lives. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a fly on the wall when it comes to that. Uh, Jean, um, when you you just talked about the humor, you talked about like your inspirations uh, when playing Deborah. Can you talk about like the preparation that you've done playing this character? Because the comedy just seems so authentic, and you just heard everyone talk about just how real you feel and how it just fit like a glove for you like what was the preparation that that you did that made it feel so real I I, I mean I and I say this about almost every role I've done is that it, it, I, I, I let the script be my guide mm -hmm. even if I'm playing you know someone in a different culture or I'm playing a person that actually really lived whatever I I think research is really good but only to a certain point because mm -hmm. if the script doesn't support that, then that's not going to help you. So to me, the script is always the first guide, and I could just hear her in my head when I read the script. And luckily, I think her sense of humor was kind of similar uh, to mine. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I had to sort of jump through a lot of hoops to to create something that was uh, yeah. terribly you know, foreign necessarily, but mm -hmm. 
I mean, I don't think I'm like Deborah, I, but on sur in surface ways, I think I'm, I'm a lot like her. Uh, a lot of things about her I don't agree with or don't understand. <laughs> um, but that's just, but again, if it's well written, it's, it's easier to do. Can I translate for you for the people at home? What Jean means is, I'm good at everything. <laughs> I'm that chick. <laughs> you know, my favorite thing that Jean and Deborah have in common is Jean's laugh. Jean yes. has the best oh, yeah. laugh in Hollywood. <laughs> and uh, we're so lucky because sometimes you just want to hear Deborah laugh. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and, and Jean can conjure it, and it's it's a cheat code. It <laughs> so really you just is. write it. It embarrasses my children. However. It does? Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. It's, it's the best sound in the yeah. world. Right. When I went to see Forrest in a play, yeah. he said, Mom, maybe. You know, not quite so loud. Oh, oh no. Did you, tell, did you tell him, honey, it's iconic? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> people pay but money I told to him, hear I said, this I, laugh. I get the audience going. When, yeah. I first, when I first met my, my late husband, he was doing a, a, a play, a romantic mm -hmm. comedy, and I went and saw it, and the, the director came to me later and he said, some critics are coming on Tuesday night. Could you come back uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and laugh? Because you really got the audience going. I went to see it like seven, eight times mm. because he said, yeah, could you, what, what are you doing Friday night? Because uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll give you a couple tickets. Please <laughs> come back, please. He's incredible. Well, I love your laugh. And like, just next time your kids get on you, just be like, hey, I get paid to laugh, yeah. okay? Like, <laughs> what are you doing with your laugh? That uh, laugh puts food on your <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that on a mug. Like, instead of best mom in the world, the best laugh this laugh puts food on your plate. So <laughs> and they can drink it when they eat. <laughs> uh, Hannah, what aspects of your, of your character do you most enjoy playing? Mm. Well, I like mouthing off to Jean because I would because I would never dare in in reality. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I think like Ava's insolence is uh, really exciting. I'm I I feel like I'm a very respectful person. Mm -hmm. I don't like no, Ava. Sure. You're, you're more polite than me. Yeah. yeah. I think Ava, you know, is is certainly more brash at times mm -hmm. um so that's that's really fun she's also like pretty uh she's just like no filter kind of hectic energy and i am like chronically overthinking everything i say um <laughs> so i appreciate her like f the freedom of ava she's not she's yeah. a tramp and you're not yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right too <laughs> <laughs> No, but I love it when you when you tell me how ugly the dress is. You haven't seen yeah. me in a year. Yeah. And two yeah. minutes later, you're in there going, mm mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like fugly ass dress. Yeah. It's giving big fur. Okay. Um, I had like a ton of questions in my head, but I'm totally running out of time. So I'm like, which ones do I do? Mm. By the your way, favorite one. my favorite yeah. one. Yeah. Sorry, what's it by the uh, way? What's, what's when they're all your favorite? What do you do there? You're just like, you want to ask all of those. Um, by the way, what you said about like mouthing off to Jean, it reminds me very similar to a last interview that I had where they were acting against Morgan Freeman and their favorite thing was mouthing off to Morgan Freeman. Ooh. And I'm like, that's a testament to how you are as an actress because like you won't do it in real life, but you're like, no. you'll get the courage to <laughs> do, it, do it on the screen. Yeah. So without giving away any spoilers, like are there themes or character arcs like you're excited to explore in season three? And uh, again, no spoilers, but like, yeah. what are you excited for the people to see once like the show gets going? I'm a, Jen, I know you've been quiet a little bit. <laughs> I've been noticing, so I wanna hear from you. We have been saying it's about sex and power. Mm -hmm. Season three of Hacks is, is about sex and power. So mm -hmm. I think we explore yeah. those things and we're, we're excited for people to, people to see them. Mm -hmm. um, what else can we tease? We, we do take on cancel culture pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We so take on Christmas. We take, we take on Christmas. We take on Christmas. The war on Christmas is way yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, we don't take really it on, but we do. We, we don't take we, it on, but we, we have an episode on Christmas. One thing yeah. that Deborah Vance and Jean have in common is a love for Christmas. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. So that's true. you get to see how Deborah Vance does Christmas. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Christmas Christmas people are like foaming at the mattress. Like, Deborah's, yes. Deborah's very un PC Christmas. Yes. <laughs> is that what the episode is called? I really hope that's what the episode is called. It's called the Deborah Vance Christmas Spectacular. Obsessed. That's like a classic like Christmas title, and I'm living for that. Yeah. That is incredible. That's an exclusive. Oh, that is an exclusive. That's an exclusive. Yeah, that's that's an exclusive. This is South by Southwest. <laughs> and a guy today exclusive. asked me if we were going to do a, an, a live show mm. ever. Oh. oh. We did one um, season one, right? We did a live table read. 
Yeah, but oh, yeah. he means tape it live. Like, oh, you know, oh like, like a multi -cam? No, I think he meant like a... Or a stand-up, like, like you like doing stand-up. Like you do stand a stand-up thing or whatever. Oh. I don't know. Would you want to? And I said, well, no. What But I said that Hannah want, has always wanted to do Hacks on Ice. That's oh. right. Oh. So, uh, all I gotta <laughs> do is... Oh, oh, oh get out the skates. <laughs> All right, last question, because I could sit here all day and just talk about this, because you, I want to be a part of your friend group. Like, this hey. is just all the envy over here. We'll add you to the text chain. <laughs> literally, yeah. literally. No Thank you. Okay, um, but as far as, like, you know, this show goes, and obviously we talked about the commentary that it has, where do you guys see, like, how do you feel about the state of the industry when it comes to actresses over 60? Where do you see it going? Like, do you think it's gotten better over the last couple decades? Like, where, where, what are your thoughts on that? I, th I think it has, certainly has for me, but I, I do <laughs> yeah. know that I'm that I'm extremely lucky in that regard, extremely lucky. Um, but I, I think what's happened, what used to happen a lot is that because men historically mm -hmm. have always been the ones who go out in the world and do things, yep. you know, so of course stories were about them, you know, and uh, but I now think people are, are discovering and realizing not only do women have more freedom now to, to follow their passions and, and have more free, you know, just have more freedom, is that we are now discovering also the stories of really remarkable women who did things a hundred years ago that made them even more remarkable because it was a hundred years ago and they had to buck the system in every possible way. But so it's been a really slow, gradual climb but it's it's but now people are saying you know it's, it's, of course a, a woman can be any story that can be about a man can be about a woman i love that and i love that the show is tackling that like head on you know mm -hmm. i feel like there's a lot of things that skirt by it but this one just says nah bro <laughs> we wrap it in a joke, we, you know. Yeah, you know, exactly. You make people laugh while learning lessons. That's mm -hmm. that's what I really dig. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the studio. This was an incredible conversation. And this was the last one for you guys, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to party, go to drag shows, do the yep. whole yeah. 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 This is amazing. Thank well, you so much. Great. Hack Season 3 will air on Max beginning in May. You can watch all of our studio interviews with the South by Southwest on our YouTube page, youtube.com, SXSW. I'm your host, Juju Green. Thank you so much for watching. Good job, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.